Good evening, good morning, or whatever time it is, wherever you are. Uh, are you able to hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can uh, hear me. If you see that. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Audio okay? Audio's good, video's good. Okay. The only problem is right. that I can see David Cobbs. That's my only problem. All right, Sensei so Paul, if you can kind of watch the lobby and see if people are coming in and let them in. Uh, it's kind of awkward here since I'm doing the uh, presentation while at the same time we're handling the administrative work of Microsoft Teams. So I've got an admin computer there, the presentation video the camera there, and anything else. But we have another camera over there. If you look at the side, you might see the video. So we have two videos. And I'm trying to also record this whole thing from a third account back in my house. So hopefully we'll be able to watch this again, or also at the same time, we have it available for those people who are not able to come here and watch it today and participate. Um, because of this current arrangement, I will not be able to entertain any questions and answer during or after my presentation. However, at the very end, we can have a chat session. I'll be able to do that. So I'll be back at my house and sitting at the desk and coming back or talking with everybody about any of the techniques. Um, I'm, I am the first presenter tonight or this morning or wherever you are. I know Australia is, he is here. Let's see Australia here. Uh, that should, well, other countries are here. Hopefully India is here. Uh, Russia should be here. Uh, Malaysia should be here. Uh, Bahamas is going to be here, I'm sure. And I know, I know Venezuela is here for sure. That is great. A very international event today. Uh, um, I will be doing a presentation today about how to take a done test. And I don't think you need to be a very high level to learn or understand what I'm trying to present today. If you're a beginner, just started yesterday, I hope that you'll be able to also grasp what I'm trying to say. Uh, because this is not exactly the technical things that you learn in class, how to do this and how to do that. I'm, I'm going to be covering the concepts, things I need to see, like the bottom line, the baseline of anybody who may be taking a test. And I'm going to go over those things today also. And maybe show some few things about some technical things too. Uh, something that what I've witnessed in watching black belt examinations. Some of them are more good, some of them not, not so good. And it's not a matter of them, the, the people who are taking the test bad, or the teacher, their teachers are bad. No, it's uh, what I see is that we are not be able to present to you or pass to you the techniques that needs to be done in a certain way. And we'll cover that also. Okay. Today I have with me David Cobb and Stephen here. I want to make sure that they will be able to present to you how they should do and how they you shouldn't do the good and the bad. Okay, so I'll be going over that too. Right. I'm going to go ahead and start with the points that I want to see in black dot examination. And those points, actually, you should be practicing every day. Not only the dojo, every day, all day, in through your mind, in your mannerism. And the first thing, I have five points that I want to go over. First point, very important, is posture. Now, I can't see those guys behind me. Are they slouching or are they standing straight? strong and straight that's good and that's how it should be when you're taking the test when you're even waiting for a test or you're in seiza sitting waiting for the test now if you're standing waiting for the test you should not look like right no that demonstrates to me you are not mentally in the test or have not prepared enough or not trying to present to everyone that you are black belt material or a high level black belt material. 
You must be able to be up and straight. Good posture straight. Now this uh, thing, Sensei as I mentioned earlier, is Sensei not hi. just for high-ranking belts or people who are ready to take black belt tests. It's for every person who is taking karate. And it's not only in the dojo. You must create a habit. It becomes part of your character. A person stands straight up, especially uh, all these structures. I hope you can convey this value, this concept to your young students. So when they're in school, sitting at the desk, are they sitting like this or sit up straight? Now, as an instructor, many of you out there are instructors, you see a student sit up straight. It's very impressive. That person shows confidence and has a desire to learn. That's what you have in your mind. And that also helps them learn more because you are presenting more to them because you pay more attention to them because they actually stand out very well. So every day, you should be doing this, even at work or walking. Maybe sometimes you are tired. No, it happens. Not a problem. There are times you can't always get up straight, especially you try higher when you're working all day or doing things all day. But as a normal situation, you want to stay up straight. Kunishi Sensei said posture is the first thing you must present. And not only mentally, physically. And physically, it's very important because if you are leaning toward one way, now your movement is favoring one direction while not the other direction. By centering your body, posture, you're able to maneuver in any direction evenly, whichever direction they come from. So that's very important. And while you're doing your te uh, techniques, a common problem I see at Dante's Actually, class all the time, of people trying to do techniques, especially while doing a movement. Okay, let's see. Let's watch them do movement, a stepping in oizuki. How oh, I see people do that they shouldn't be doing. Okay, so zenku sachi get on baraika, my dear. Okay, stepping forward, oizuki each. Ni San Mawate Onaji was up. It's Ni San Mawate Yame. Okay, you saw a difference between these two people. Now, I want you to do this technique going that way just so you can see more about your posture, okay? Okay, thanks for getting up, but I come back to it. Okay, now watch carefully, watch his posture. Each, me, son. Okay, come here, back to your position. Okay, then you see, as he moves, move, leaning forward, then punch it. You, you need to make sure that you maintain Good posture as you move forward. Don't move with your shoulders, but well with your hips. Okay. Now, um, there are many people I see that are at a dojo or a place where you can practice. So now I want you to do it together with us. Okay? So, um, why don't you line up this way? Okay? And we'll do five. Move that way more. That way. Okay, five steps of Oizuki. Okay, concentrate and moving with the hips. Okay, not the shoulders. Don't lean forward at all. This is important for to get the beginners uh, in tune with how we do things. And also, for a more advanced belt, when they get tired, they do this too. But mentally, you must keep that in mind. Make sure you have a good posture all the way. Okay, everybody. In the world, if you're out there, okay, on, but I can't. Okay, on my time, Oizuki. Concentrate, making sure your back is straight. Ready, 
Oh my god. Eight. 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 Yeah, okay, thank you. Back here again. All right, hopefully you get the feel for it. Understand how you need to move with your hips. Think about maintaining a good posture all the way through. Again, keep that in mind when you are not just taking it, uh, practicing, and not just when you're taking the test. Think about it when you're walking around town or in your house. Walk like this. When you're tired, it happens. No, there's no problem. But if you can, create a habit of walking straight up. And when you're just standing, stand, practice. That makes a better karateka because you are already attuned to centering, better balance, not one side or the other. Okay? That's the first point I want to make. Second point is eyes. After posture is eyes. You may have good posture, but you may be looking. Okay, let me closer. You may be looking around. Posture is there, but the eyes not. Focus. You need to focus all these your eyes into what you're doing. Pay attention at the matter at hand. It's very important, and not only karate, everything you do. Of course, when you're driving a car, you just want to look around, and all of a sudden, bam, not very good. People get hurt, at least you'll get insurance points off your insurance, right? Pay more money, so that's not good. But what's important is, by focusing your mind, you can focus your energy to the effort. If, if you put eyes this way, your eyes that way, looking at things, thinking about other things, you're trying to do something else, the energy dispersed. The power is not there. Okay? So, looking at them, so, if they were uh, doing a kata, for example, what I see a lot is you're looking at your technique. They're looking at the movement, looking at your punch, but you should be focused at the target, not your technique. Okay. So let's see first. Do um, same thing. Of, okay, step back and further to the white line there, and step forward. Same thing, Oizuki, but your eyes not focused straight. You're looking down. Anything else? Basically, you're showing that you're not focused. Okay. Teachers, watch, making sure you see these things while you're training your students. And when you're students, when you're training, don't be like this when we just demonstrate right now, okay? Say this is that you get on Barai. Come on, say it. Oizuki, on my count. Eight. Eight. Son. She. Go. Yame. Okay, back. Okay, posture was good. Power is somewhat there. Good technique overall. But if you notice, their eyes were not focused at the matter at hand. When I see a Dantes, watch a Dantes, and you're doing that. Why I was, I'm thinking, why are you taking the test now? Your mind is not at it, with it. So therefore, you're not ready. I don't want to see you not ready. I want you to be ready. And don't do that only as a test. Do it as a habit during training, during anything in your life. Focus your attention at the matter at hand. That'll put your energy, all that thing, make things much easier. Okay, now let's do, let's do the same thing. I want to see good focus of attention. Okay, Zen, you start to get on by like, my head. Oizuki, it. Me. Son. Chi. Yame. Okay, back. Okay. That's a better example of how 
a technique should be done. With good posture, good eyes, good focus of attention. Next. The third thing, I watch people's stances. How are their stances? We all teach how stances should be, the proper way. The weight distribution, how your knees are bent, how balanced it is, how your feet are pressured. It's very, very different in different stances. Are you doing it correctly? Or do all your stances look alike? And often I see that too. A lot of times I can't tell the difference between Zen Kutsudachi or Ko Kutsudachi. Two completely different stances, but I see similar stances during tests and that kind of messes things up for the person seeing the test. So let's see a demonstration of possibly close together here. Now watch their stances, feet, knees. Okay? Okay. Zen to touch get on but I come I said right this is the way you're not supposed to do okay it may not be too obvious. I want to make them do things more obvious so you can catch it, but sometimes it's not easy to catch. Okay? Oizuki. Yes. E. San. Chi. Go. Koshin. Kokutsu dachi. Shuto uke. Yes. Me, son, she, oh, good job, good example. <laughs> now, if this was an in person class, I can exchange conversation with you so you can tell me what you see. Unfortunately, in a current situation, I can't really talk with you. Uh, but for the record's sake, you can go ahead and Type it in chat and indicate what you saw was incorrect. Anything about their feet, length, width, knee, foot. All those things are very important in the type of stances. So go ahead and type it in if you can. If you can't, no, not a problem. But now I want to go over a few of the things that I see during tests, yes, black belt candidates and black belts themselves do these things. They look good sometimes, but little things I see that kind of makes me go, oh, messes the whole thing up just because of that little thing. And I'm going to mention those few, 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 few of those things right now. Okay, uh, first, David here, come up forward, or right here. Okay. Zen to touch get on by my tip. Okay. What I see sometimes when the knee is buckled in. Not good. Okay. Another one, foot angle. Okay. Should be rather straight, right? It's right now it's straight, then it goes out. No. Another one is foot by out and the knee in. This is one of my big pet peeves. When the toes are pointing one direction, knees pointing other direction. Energy is spending in different directions. Also, it's not good for your joints. Okay? All right, thank you. Now I want you to do the kokutsu dachi. Okay? Okay. The part I looked at, look at a lot is the knee and the toes. Are they straight? Aligned in the same direction? But what I also see often, even if it is pointing the same direction, both the foot, the way, foot and the knee is pointing this direction, but wrong way. It should be straight. Your energy is flowing to the front, but not your feet. No, knee. foot and knee going this way. You're spending your energy in a different direction. It should be straight. Okay. Thank you. Now, stay here. Another one, I don't know if you know, it's hard to see from that angle, but face that direction. And... Zen to touch in there. Uh, short. Short. Okay. All right. He did this kind of Zen to touch. Uh, it's almost a standing. 
it could be called Ayumi Gachi, which is like walking stance. Maybe a Hanzen Kusachi. But he's definitely not 50 years old, is he? <laughs> young, young students, I would like to encourage nice long stances to help develop the legs. Legs need to be strong when they're young. So when you're old like uh, me, you have some strength developed. Okay, thank you. Um, another thing, the bending of the knee. Go to Zen Kusachi again, face that direction. Okay, now what I often see is, which happens often when you're tired, is the knee back this way. Behind the ankle. That's not good. You need to keep it at least this much. Ideally, to be straight down to the toes here. But practicing this method each time will help you create a habit of it. So don't just do it only for the test. Don't do it just when you, the sensei is watching. Do it whenever you are practicing, period. Okay? Hey, thank you. thank you. Okay. The stances. Now, another stance. Hibadachi. Okay. Okay. Again, the alignment of the, no, uh, the knees and the feet. Knees going to push you forward here. Push out. I mean, push this way, but pointing in that direction. Same thing with the feet. That's very important, too. Now, Shikodachi. The knee and the toes oriented in the same direction. What I often see in tests or just plain training is toes are out and knees are in. This, the knee may go this way, the toes go this way. Energy flowing in different direction. I'm going to consolidate and focus the same direction. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now, a little bit more. Um, in detail about stances. Uh, right here. Okay. We also have Uki Ashi Dachi. Okay, so I want you to face that direction. Uh, do Uki Ashi Dachi. Okay. What's important here, let me see, other, other foot better. Okay, because I want to show you this side. This foot is about 45 degrees. Here we go. And the knee makes me its toes in the same direction. Same thing over here. The knee and the toes in the same direction. And the front foot, the ball of the foot should be lightly touching. You may see people further out. I'm just about right about here. Okay. And then if you want neko asizachi, you bring it in here and put your toes to touch. So there's a difference between uki ashitachi and neko ashitachi. Okay. Thank you. And then I'll go over now a little bit more, a little small detail. The difference between sangetsu dachi and sanchin dachi. When you do sanchin dachi, make sure it is just one foot forward, not way further forward, and not way off to the side. So shoulder width apart, one foot forward. Then, back foot stays straight, knee, heel, front foot goes out. Knees pushed in, but then you have to have a feeling of rolling your thighs That's outward at the same time. And say hi. And what's very hard to see, but I can see, when I watch people do it, is that the bottom of the foot, the pressure should be on the outside of the foot, not the inside. That happens when you bring your knees in too close and not rolling your thighs outward. Now, with Hangetsu Dachi, it's a little bit forward here. It's very similar. This time, though, you bring your knees in, and then the pressure is on the inside of your feet. This is more it's common for practicing for Kumite. It's easier to maneuver around. Sanchin, on the other hand, A for stability, strength. Okay, thank you. Moving on, we saw how we have stances. We have the eyes. Okay, posture, eyes, stances. Next one, what everybody practices in Kihon is Hikite. And another pet peeve of mine when people don't properly do the Hikite. 
Okay. Kiki te. Okay. I want to have you demonstrate what I don't like to see. Okay. I want to do oizuki like before. Oizuki. And watch the hiki te. What's it look like? Zenku such a good like. What's it? It. Oizuki. Hey. Son. Shit. Go. Okay. Mawate. Watch us from the mirror too. You see some error coming up. It. Me. Son. She. Go. Mawate. Yame. Okay. If you see something wrong, go on and type it in the chat area. I'll see you later. Just type it in. Yeah, yeah, it's correct. Ah, what was market was yes. You know, you saw it correctly. What's not only teachers need to know or catch people doing it correctly. So as students, we need to catch it too. It's not just the movement, but also the feel of the hikite. You need to feel it properly. If you don't feel it properly, you're fighting against your own body or fighting against the technique and or your energy is flowing somewhere else. Right now for Kihon, straight forward and back. A common error is, okay, stand right there, face that direction. The timing. One, two, ready? Thanks for coming by. Come on, Okay, always with key. Each. Me. Good. That was nice and obvious, right? <laughs> From here, one, two. Not synchronized. Ba -ba I saw this in another school watching the guy do it. There's a black belt going. Ba -ba -ba -ba. It might be really close to each other, but it's not the same time. Also, when you do the focusing your technique, you need to focus by relaxing them, tension all at the same time. Okay, relax, tight. Relax to tight. Very important to make sure you relax and tighten and focus at the same time. Also, another one is the elbow. Yes, elbow. You don't want the elbow sticking out. Focus moving forward for a punch, opposite direction, straight in the other direction. Straight back. Don't let the elbow go out. If you let the elbow go out, energy is going out this way. And if you're tired and just snap it, bam, snap it this way, you're going to hurt your elbow. And it's not good to have that. Uh, no, I was yes, I did. That goes, oh, that hurts. Everybody does that, especially when they're tired, just trying to yank it out as hard as you can. Hard as you can. Bam! Also, do not let your hand come up here and punch. It's straight in. As you do that, to help you go straight in is that keep your elbow close to your side of the body and straight. Not the elbow going out. Elbow stays on here. A problem is when people try to keep the elbow close into your body, snow is it here? Sort of goes up. Because you're trying to keep the elbow to your body. That is very common. And I like the effort that you're making that you keep the elbow close to your body as you punch. But this is not good. Like tighten your body and it's not relaxed. That when you're not relaxed, you can't get speed. You can't get the focus on it. You need to keep your elbow down or shoulder down. To do that is not to go straight with the elbow. Keep your elbow down as you go. Keep your elbow down. The punch. The shoulder stays down when you keep the elbow down. Now I want you next to uh, do a, come up here and do a punch with the elbow when you rotate your arm. This is, no, don't rotate the arm. Okay? Rotate the arm when you punch. Because everybody knows you gotta change, right? Train. Change the position. Okay? Punch. 
Okay. This, even the speed, doesn't matter. I'm not worried about the speed or the power, but the mechanics of that punch. Demonstrate again the same rotating the arm. Okay. Problem I see here. I see a lot of black belts do this too. That's why you need to pull this back. <laughs> okay. New punch, the elbow is sticking out. Not good. Elbow should be in, so downward. First of all, when your elbow is out like this, and you block, you can easily mess up your elbow. Also, you can easily take people down very easily. Now, what you should be done is elbow down. So when you block, it's pretty strong. But what's more important is when you have your elbow out, this part, the muscles have to be stretched out. So you can't have a full tension of these punch. So in order to keep this elbow down, you tighten the side muscles. Then you have a full, strong connection between from the floor, foot, leg, side, shoulders, neck. Everything is focused together. With the elbow out, the weak part of the link. The power is not there. It's a broken power. So you're not, you're not maximizing the effort. So you need to keep that in mind. Thank you. Okay, hikite. There are many other things about hikite, philosophically also. Uh, that will have to be another time in lecture. But keep in mind that hikite is part of the kihon. To help you understand focus, timing. The mechanics uh, about your body. Okay. So far we have uh, number one, five elements so far. Posture, eyes, stance, hikite. That's four. I was only make mission five. Five is probably the most important part. That brings everything together to help you really do what you are, what you're trying to do. Five, I just say ki. And not the sense of yelling out ki, or just saying ki, or yelling out, screaming, hey! The, the process itself, mechanically, you need to tighten it from here. And then lock it up. And hey, not from your throat, from the chest. Not A, but <coughs> be more powerful. Bringing the energy together. Your body, sound. Very, very important so that when you do your kata, you don't do A. It sounds like you're just saying A. Put more power to it, right? Full power, put your tense focus on it. Of course, very important too is it helps you breathe. A lot of times I see people trying to punch too hard and they hold the breath that you punch hard and then breathe out. To be with the power. Okay, to help you explode. So those are the five elements uh, that I want to you to really think about when you're taking the test. Well, actually, when you're training for taking the test. Good posture, very important. You must have good focus of the eyes, good stances, strong hikite, and then ki, with strong spirit, showing everybody that you are in the moment and put everything into it. It's very, very important. Oh, I forgot to mention one more thing about the hikite that they demonstrate also is this. The lazy hikite. Not halfway here. Any more advanced stage, so the concept of hikite can be shorter. From here, this hikite, when you do fighting stance, more realistic, you don't have to do this. It could be. The hiki tech could be short. The concept is important. The energy focus has to be timing to be the same. Same time as this week here, but not lazy. Yes. Very, very important. Can you get a time? How much time you have here? 
30 fowl, we got some more time. Great, excellent. So we want to go over another concept. Um, a very important part of Shindo Jinen Yu is the Kurite. Even black belts, they have to do Tai Saroki Shodan for a test to make sure they understand the concept. I could tell if they're doing it correctly or not. It's a different type of feeling when you uh, exude the energy. Um, and the position of the hand, angle of the hand, it's not here. This is katete, hooking, right? Well, it's not saying stop. It's here. Or it's not this. Get the elbow in. And generally speaking, you try to keep your elbows in for many things. Okay? Don't let the elbow go out, when, especially when you doing kumite. Out, get hit. Keep the elbows in. Put the elbows here. Protect yourselves. It's another concept too. Well. What's important is the kurite. Um, okay. Okay, from here. Let's see if he can get the kurite right. Okay. Now, I'm going to do, hold on to him tight as I can. First, he's going to try to muscle it out, okay? Trying to get, okay. I can face you better. He's going to muscle it out of my grip. If he's super strong, I'm weak, not a problem. If we're too much even, it's going to be a struggle. Let's see. So, you'll get there eventually, right? <laughs> Okay, now I try to do kurite with technique. Same intention, intent grip as before. Still using muscles. Problem is right now the energy you're pulling this way. Hey, okay, oh good, they're better. Okay, there you go. If you're pulling the kurite, Goody, 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 circle of motion. That's what you want. Not holding away here. Circle of motion. Right again. Circle of motion. Hey, that's it. That's it. The key point is when you do this, you want to do it slowly. As he pushes down or pushes or moves down, you don't push or moves. Okay, I resist in that direction. As soon as I resist opposite direction, he changes direction. He ch then I change my direction of pulling. It keeps on moving, changing, and I move, change my resistance. Constantly changing, little by little, it goes over and it's easy to get away. What's the important part is when you do it, try not to use muscle strength, circular motion. If I use my muscle, let me use my muscle to try to get you and use that to counter. Much easier, yes. That was a bit of muscle. I can feel the tension. Yeah, I can feel the tension. All right, feel the tension till the end. Ah, first push, okay. Once you be here, you're trying to push, okay? All right. I hope you'll be able to do that um, right now in the dojo. I know some of you are at the dojo right now with some partners. Try that with you. Hold the person, got to hold a grip. Make it real. Don't be so compliant and make, help them release. Make them understand the feeling of the technique. Okay? Let's see you with him. He's going to grab you. You the creature. Circular motion. Circular motion. Okay, you're trying to bring your whole arm back. Try to keep your elbows in front of you a little bit, but inside here. Getting better, okay? Get, get the feel of the circle. Continuously changing the pressure of the energy. Okay. Okay, I'm mean, asking. Thank you. 
This is in Thai Sabaki Shodan. Everybody does it, but not many people do it correctly. So if you're at the dojo right now, I would like for you to do Thai Sabaki Shodan with them right now as I count for them. Okay? Everybody ready? Go skate! Hey! Hata! Come on! Oh my cow! Yes! Me! Son! Shoot! Oh! Shoot! It! He! Some! She! Oh! Oh! Shoot! Oh! Yo! Yo! E! He! Some! She! Oh! Oh! Each, me, some, she, oh, no, yame, Josuke, hey, hey, thank you. Okay, hopefully you will start practicing Tyson Bucket Short just for the sake of doing it. Think about the process of the kudite. Very, very important part of Shin Doji and you. You know, Honi Sensei learned Aiki Ju just before karate. And he was really good about that too, right? Um, another point that I like to talk about in Tarasaka Baki Shodan in Shin Doji and you, uh, we had uh, Gedan Haraite. Gedan Haraite. Looks like Gidan Barai, but it's not. You see some of my videos doing Tai Sabi Shodan, and it looks like Gidan Barai. But it's a little bit different. Gidan Barai goes up and down, up and down, sweeping down along the arm. But Gidan Barai and Tai uh, Gidan Haraite is different in that Gidan Haraite, you need to sweep around elbow first, then down. So it's not here, it's very close. Up, sweep, then down. Hit the elbow first. Okay? Elbow down. It can look almost like this, but you see a little bit up higher, a sweeping motion with the elbow. Yeah. So keep that in mind. To understand the difference between Gidan Barai, which we do also, and Gidan Haraite. Okay? Keep that in mind, please. Okay? Time, please. Four, three. A few more minutes. And, uh, we will start before 8 o'clock to give time for adjusting the system to for the delivery for the next presenter. Uh, another thing, I'll come I want to talk about something else. Do you remember what I was going to talk about? I remember Haicho Yamazaki always, always get on our case about hip rotation, hips. And if I don't see that in Dantes, the person is not executing the techniques correctly. It's just big, strong, shoulder muscle, or not hip action. Hip, you can get a lot more power. Power. The exercise we have to do basically is you can just stand here okay, to help you rotate the hips. You can do it from kibadachi or just this position. What you want to do is be uh, do gyakuzuki and snap in the hip. And practicing that, you can practice the, all the five elements that I talked about earlier. It must have good posture, good eye focus, good stances, strong higite, and strong ki, the spirit behind the power. 
So, okay, if you come along forward with me a little further. Okay. Okay, everybody who's here, there in the dojo, stand up where you are, just like this. Relax. Now, place your hand off to the side about 45 degrees. Other hand, hikite. From here, we'll do it slowly first to get the feel for understanding the mechanics behind it. I want you to do good hikite coming back down. Don't pull it back. If you pull it back, the shoulder comes up. Drop here. Okay, and then punch. And as you snap the wrist, snap the hip. Not one, two. Okay, don't. Do one, two. Okay, should be everything is relaxed, everything just focused, power at the same time. Let's keep the posture there. You can't do the posture is broken. You must maintain good posture. And again, the eyes focus at the point of the target. Okay. And then the stances. This stance, you could do the Hans and Kosechi. And if you're younger, you could do a bigger stance. Okay? What's important is the focus of the hips, the timing with the hips and the punches. Then, other side, 45 degree. Punch. Okay? So we'll do it all together, okay? So everybody stand up. If you're watching, you're able to do that. Stand up straight. Good posture. Left hand out, look over to the side, focus of attention. Good center stance. Okay. Then from here, we'll start off with mid speed. Don't have to put power behind it. I want you to think about the timing of the wrist snap and the hips. Okay. Make sure you pivot on the balls of the feet. Okay. Ready? Itch. Other side. Eight. Focus. Ah. Key. Oh. Oh. Itch. Ah. Itch. Now, full power. Loud ki each one. Itch. Ah. 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 Oh. Itch. Oh. Yo. Hey, I'm here. Hey. I think that will end at this time. But try to keep in mind those five key elements of Kihon. Posture. Focus of the eye. Good stances. Maintain your center well. Hikite. Proper hikite. Don't let it be lazy. Wrong down. And nice, loud ki, strong ki, breathing out with focusing of the tension of the body. It doesn't always necessarily have to be loud. It has to be powerful. Okay. Okay. Uh, that'll be the conclusion of my portion of the presentation. Okay. Feels good. Hey. Arigatou gozaimashita.